Naruto is a shonen manga. Obviously, there are going to be many, many fights in the series, and because there are literally hundreds of them, you're going to miss a couple of them, you're going to forget they exist, but it doesn't mean that they are bad. So today, I want to talk about the 12 most underrated fights in the Naruto series. And joining me today, we have Lightning Snow back in the channel. Say hello to everybody. What's going on, guys? Back today for another one. Thank you for having me on the channel. Yeah, absolutely. So, what I thought for this video particularly, I asked Lightning Snow to come up with six fights that he thinks uh, are very underrated, and I'm gonna come up with six myself. So, why 12? Because I don't like multiples of five, so just doing 12 for the six of it and we're going to actually be ranking them and talking about each of them as they go so i'm gonna say my number six then lightning snow and then my number five and so on and so forth till we reach the most underrated fights in our opinion at least and we don't know what each other picked so like hopefully we didn't pick the same fight because then <laughs> there's gonna be less fights in the video but if it happens it happens fingers you know. crossed y'all let us begin with my number six a very underrated fight that people don't really talk too much about and for my pickings, I chose fights that I really never see anybody talking about. Maybe Lightning Snow has another criteria, I don't know, but I just picked fights that are, like, very obscure. So, number six, starting off with Rock Lee versus the Sound Ninjas in the Forest of Death. Ooh, that's I, a good pick. Yeah, a lot of people talk about Rock Lee versus Gara, even Rock Lee versus Kimimaro, and then Rock Lee versus Sasuke and Naruto before the exams begin. But I don't think people talk enough about this particular one, even though it's a pretty good fight what do you think about it actually it's funny you brought this up uh because i think this fight has what a lot and i won't say a lot but a lot of fights uh in the series lack is tension i won't say serious tension and in, in the early in the later fights in the series but this one like i remember watching it as a kid uh i was genuinely concerned that sakura and lee were gonna get themselves killed uh so this fight has some high stakes especially when it's in the setting of the force of death when you're already under the assumption that our main characters obviously not naruto but like it's 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 not going to be unreasonable for any of the other side characters like Shikamaru or anybody else to act get killed. So this one with Lee, yeah, I, th I think there's some high tension in this fight. Yeah, when when he arrives to save Sakura, it's a very cool moment. Just like, yes, Rock Lee, let's go, because Sakura is going to struggle a lot against those guys by herself. And Naruto and Sasuke, they were unconscious because of the Orochimaru fight. And the way Lee fights against three guys at the same time is actually really cool. I mean, he even uses the primary Lotus, mm -hmm. which fails because of Zaku's jutsu but I mean it's just an interesting fight and I think my favorite moment for that fight is when Rock Lee just literally grabs the ground and lifts it up like a piece of dirt that blocks the attack from those so I was like holy crap this is pretty insane yeah it was like, like, a, like and, it was like a tree like a trunk of a tree or something like that he just pulled it right out of the ground like it was nothing yeah. I'm like what the heck and he was in base with his weights on and he was still like you know beating yeah the sound if it wasn't for Zaku there saving Dosu Lee would have got the win and then we also saw Dosu's really cool powers being able to manipulate the sound wave to reach Rock Lee's ear. This is a really cool fight that people don't talk too much about. And I think it's because Sakura has a big moment just after that fight with her cutting her own hair and then Sasuke uses the curse mark for the first time after that. So it, it gets a little bit overshadowed by that, but I want to mention it. And then the, you know, cool Shika fight. Cho trio kind of coming in and out yeah. of their line. Like a lot too. of things happen. Yeah, so it, it, it isn't just Lee, but Lee, I think, honestly, for me anyway, I think Lee, like, half steals the show. It's I, For me, I think it's definitely Lee and Sasuke do that, that, that do the most work in this fight so i'm not i'm not taking anything away from the you know shika cho or even soccer for that matter but i do think that uh both lee and sasuke did the most work and lee did pretty good for what he had to had to deal with all right yeah so i guess we agree about this one let's see our number six okay so I, it's funny that we go through the tuning exams right now like we, like we start from the tuning exams because my number six is shino for Sasaki. oh no yeah i i definitely agree with you now on that i one. think most people like i, I guess i guess I, I guess it's a good thing that we do this underrated topic because this one's i won't say this is like underrated but not, or like by the means of hate by hated by the fans or whatever but i don't see anybody talking about this fight and i think the reason i like this fight so much is because back in part one before kakashi really became my favorite uh or my number one specifically i was liking shino a lot like shino was yeah. the guy because of this fight specifically because i thought he was just like so cool and coordinated um i, I thought he showed like shikamaru levels of 
intelligence just in this fight alone. I mean, it didn't take him yeah. long to start thinking of ways. Like, he already had Beatles plugged up into Zaku's arms pre -Hay uh, Hayate saying, okay, start. <laughs> At least that's what it seemed like. Um, yeah, and like Haku had both of his arms, quote unquote, broken before the fight. He's like, oh, I can't fight anymore. And then, oh, actually, I can. But then, you know, he doesn't underestimate anybody. That's kind of like the, the norm yeah. of his clan, of the Aburame clan. So, yeah, there was no way Zaku's going to win that fight from the beginning. And it's just really cool the way they juxtapose that fight with the Orochimaru scene with Kakashi and Orochimaru just saying, yeah, they are all disposable. Yeah. I don't care about my students. It's very cool. Yeah. And then, like, she knows, like, literally just taunting Zaku. He's like, oh, yeah, like, it's better to keep two aces in the hole just to be safe. He's like, well, one ace in the mm -hmm. hole is good. Two aces are better. And then he just freaking, like, elbows him across the freaking room, bro. I was like, okay. Yeah, this, this man's this man's legit. Um, and, just, and also, when Zaku uses his power, his arms literally explode. Yeah. And they're blown off his body. This doesn't happen in the anime because it's censored, but it's very brutal in the manga, and it's just cool to see. No, it's funny you said it, because, like, I, I, I digested watching the anime first uh, before I read the manga. I, yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. And I remember what, re like rereading or reading it for the first time in the manga. I'm like, this did not happen. I'm pretty sure his arms were still <laughs> attached to his to his body, but no, I, I think it's I think it would have benefited more. I know it's censored like stuff, but I think it would have benefited even more to have I know, just the, the intensity of how she know because even like even people in the room like Naruto's like, man, who would have thought that him being so quiet? I can't wait to get my shot at him. And then Sakura's like, I thought Shino was weird before, but like, now, yeah, <laughs> now it's such a shame Shino doesn't get more screen time in the series, man. But yeah, like you'd have some yeah, of my friends. Is is, I was I like, Shino was my favorite character, but then like Kakashi was very close second. And then Kakashi started stealing the show, but yeah. Yeah, but. I mean, Shino has two fights in the series. Period. But yeah, <laughs> so. unfortunately, I mean, at least he wins both of them. So like, yeah, yeah, we're good there. Yeah, this is a great pick. Uh, I definitely agree with you on that one. So moving on for uh, my number five, and this is actually a really obscure one, I would say, kind of like, but I quite enjoy it, which is the Ambu members versus the Animal Path summons, more specifically the multi headed hound during the pain arc. No hate on that whatsoever. I think people don't talk about that enough. Honestly, well, for good reason because the Ambu, for the most part, don't do jack aside from Itachi and Kakashi and <laughs> yeah. arguably Yamato. Yeah, the Ambu as an organization is kind of laughed off because you know they don't do anything, they're usually used as jobbers every time they're on screen, they're just getting bodied by whoever is the main character of that scene. So the nameless characters, they're Ambu members feel like absolute trash, but this is the exception, and I think this fight does a lot for the Ambu just as an organization because those guys were throwing those massive elemental style jutsus on the multi headed hound, they were able to restrain it for a good while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember watching this the first, or yeah, watching this for the first time and thinking, like, like it's just subconsciously thinking that like oh the ambu are actually doing more than they usually do like i never seen like and i wasn't even thinking that in the joking way i was like oh they're actually putting up a good resistance against these animals because like by this point pain had been like you know on a god tier level to at this point to us mm -hmm. you know and so to see the ambu who again like you said are usually jobber characters uh actually pulling out jutsu that you know you've never seen before i didn't think that the ambu would be capable <laughs> yeah. of uh it, it's definitely well it's definitely a warm welcome at least for me anyway because like i really thought in early ship into the Ambu were kind of cool. Um, even more so when I learned that both Itachi and Kakashi were part of that. So I was like, you know, these ninjas should be around that level. So finally finally being able to see that is it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, first that slice of wind style that cuts through the legs of the hound, mm -hmm. and then those massive lightning style pillars that, you know, pretty much restrained it. It was pretty cool, and that hound was giving Jiraiya a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. That's Jiraiya with a massive summon. So it's, you know, a pretty big deal, and it probably the most interesting thing the Ambu does in the entire series when it comes to just strength feats and of course I'm not talking about characters like Itachi and Kakashi who are named but the Ambu as an organization because if you take a look at what they did in the Chunin exams I mean they didn't do much when Orochimaru attacked so I guess at least they got I, I guess I also I guess it's implied that a few of them did something you know worthy like noteworthy in the counter attack yeah yeah but other than that like you just don't see it. and that's what I'm saying that the Ambu are hyped up and even in the beginning that like even like I think it was Kotetsu or someone like that was talking to the Hokage he's like yeah Orochimaru is so strong that even the Ambu Black Ops came and take him down as if that's supposed to mean that they're oh it's <laughs> <laughs> supposed to mean they're a top tier because they they're actually built up before the attack in the training exams because 
Kaisuke, when Kakashi arrives at the arena, he counts how many Ambu members mm -hmm. are guarding the arena itself. So you're like, oh, okay, so Kakashi's taking note of that. So they're probably pretty important. All right, yeah, so I guess we agree on that one too. Well, let's move on to your number five. Okay, so I think a lot of people won't agree with this. I personally loved it uh, when I first watched it. Uh, Naruto versus Kiba mm. in the shooting exam. All right, so you're picking a lot of training exams fights. Nice. Yeah, I, I gotta be honest with you. I think I love this fight solely for the Naruto part. Only, and like, when I say that, I mean that this is the first time that most of the, the Konoha, you know, uh, I guess you okay, nine, the Konoha nine specifically, because, you know, Neji and Lee didn't really know Naruto mm -hmm. in the academy, but it, it's really everyone in the room seeing that Naruto's got something, you know, because they spent all this time, like, trash talking Naruto as if he doesn't have anything, because even though they don't see his fight on, on the bridge or his performances on the in the Zabuza arc, and so, like, everyone's kind of laughing him off, you know, for the most part in the tuning exams, and then here he is, yeah. you know, you know, going toe to toe with uh, Kiba, who's I guess uh, you know uh, compared to you know the Genin, are, is one of the more like physically stronger, you know, or yeah, you know, everybody thought he was going to lose the fight. To yeah, Kiba, so it was something impressive, and Naruto was heavily nerfed yeah. in that fight because of Orochimaru's five prong seal. Yeah, so like it just seeing him just you know one up, you know constantly and like he was coming up with some like you know for naruto at this point yes. some clever strategies you know on, on the was. fly that little uh, that that transformation clone jutsu thing like i was like oh okay all right yeah and then he transformed into akamaru instead of reverting his transformation so that kiba would get confused for a sec so that was pretty clever and thinking on the fly and yeah this is something that people don't realize but naruto is actually kind of smart during fights like he has a good battle iq he's not book smart but he can think on his feet for sure yeah it's like even Kakashi's notes. I mean, if Kakashi says you got a clever, you know, tactic there, that's saying something. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, and then the Uzumaki Barrage is always uh, is always a treat to look at, at that the first time around. I think it, it doesn't get as enough, you know, repetitiveness, mm -hmm. obviously for good reason because it's not really that. I, mean, I guess it gets other variances like the 2K Barrage, or whatever. But yeah, against Gara, which is cool too. Yeah, but uh, no, I think this one is just. For me, I love I love the underdog, you know, uh, tone of this fight, and it shows everybody in the room that Naruto's got something. Like, oh, yeah. even Lee, I actually think that this is like the fight that made Lee want to actually uh, yeah. consider Naruto a sure. rival. So, uh, yeah, I, I love this fight solely because of the Naruto section. Really, um, there are some it, funny Kiba, moments that the, the fart in Kiba's face I thought was pretty. Yeah, nice. this is this is probably the reason why most people don't like this fight or the most dislike moment. Which I guess you could say it's fair, but I like like that moment because it's really funny and it makes sense like he has really good you know sense of capabilities <laughs> with his nose yeah so when you do that you're essentially throwing a, a bomb on him yeah it's, it makes sense like you'd get disoriented at least i will say sometimes it drags a bit here and there uh but i think for the most yeah, part in, in the anime i guess it does but i think in the manga it's actually pretty yeah well in the manga as long as it's definitely pays better but in the anime it, it, it does tend to drag a bit yeah um but for the most part yeah it's it's definitely a warm welcome to see naruto finally show everybody in the room like hey like I'm here, you know. You better pay attention to me. But uh, yeah, that's yeah, my, that's I, my number five. I I guess they could maybe have developed Kiba a little bit more before the fight, like make him a little bit more mean towards Naruto, so that you're like even more invested because yeah. the Kiba side of the fight's not that interesting. But the, as you said, the Naruto side is definitely interesting. Yeah, I, though I'll, I think I would I would rank Zaku versus Shino higher than this one in terms of how underrated they are. But uh, I mean, it's your ranking, so <laughs> no, I, I I can get that. I, I would honestly be okay with moving this I irreplaceably. You know, either six or five. Personally, I just I really love mm -hmm. Naruto as the underdog portion like i really love that that tone of the fight so i think that's why because Shino just kind of mops the floor with zaku uh whereas naruto kind of has to fight yeah you know Kiba. it's a different type of fight yeah. yeah but yeah that's my number five all right let's do my number four now and it's obito versus fu and torune or i guess you could say the match. i'm man. so glad you put this on the list i don't see anybody really talking about this fight yeah i mean i guess there's a good reason for it because it's really quick and it's between the five kage summit and sasuke versus Don. So, like, I guess people don't really talk about it very much. Yeah. But it's very interesting. It's a cool fight. Yeah, it's a, it's one of those fights where it's, like, it, it takes away from the, the... It's like a breath of fresh air from all the chaotic stuff that's happening. Even though it's still a fight, it's, like, it's a small fight. And it, it the, 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 the good thing about this fight, though, is that it doesn't overstay its welcome. 
Like it, it seems aware of its own importance, you know, where it's not, it's only meant to be like a quick little yeah. gimmick of a fight, you know, um, cause we obviously knew that Fu and Torne were kind of get themselves killed, uh, when they started fighting Obito, <laughs> but I like how they kind of had a unique gimmick, uh, uh, of fighting Obito. Even Obito was like, oh, okay, maybe I need to be a little bit more careful, but fight these two, um, just cause they have a unique, cause they're both from, uh, the unique clans that, uh, you know, that Obito obviously yeah. knew, knew about. And I think it's really cool to see that the root Ambu actually has some pretty decent shinobi in their ranks, like Fu being able to use all those weird Yamanaka transfer jutsus and Torune with the nano beetles. Mm -hmm. That jutsu is like pretty much a, a light version of a Matarasu. Yeah. Like if you get hit by that, you're screwed. And the, the like Obito's forced to discard one of his arms because of the jutsu because he touched Torune to suck him into Kamui. Mm -hmm. And like you can see Fu and Torune coming up with a strategy on the fly to try and hit Obito. They actually figure out Kamui. Not a hundred percent, but they know. Oh, we have to hit the guy when he materializes yeah. to suck us in. This is pretty cool, and I think it shows like, oh, okay. So the Leaf Village and the Root Ambu have more ninjas than just like the main characters, and they're powerful. Yeah, uh, you know, going on to that, I think it's a it's a cool thing that we get to see more of like the other clan members. You know, aside from like people like yeah. Sh Shukaku and I Inuichi or uh, Shino's dad. Um, I think it's really cool, like especially the fact that they're in the Root Ambu too of anything like, it's like um, it made me it made me wonder like how much how many of the other clan like are there any nara clans in the freaking root ambu you know what i'm saying like stuff like that yeah um so it's it's really it shows how much influence donzo has yeah really on everything yeah uh that's what i'm saying so like i feel like this fight you know it's it's very short what does it last like in the anime it lasts like what maybe five six minutes uh mm, i don't think even that much i think like three minutes maybe yeah something like that i don't know like and so like it, it like i said it it doesn't overstay its welcome it seems it, it seems aware of its own like limited importance really it's just a fun little fight because obito is really mm -hmm. a, for me anyway i love oh, seeing obito fight anytime really so um and, it, it, and because they were the root ambu i wasn't really cheering for them at all so uh <laughs> yeah. so i was just like all right well this is cool but because uh, I mean, at the moment you're think you're just wanting to get to you know Sasuke versus Donsville, but for what this fight had to deliver, it's also like cool to kind of build up Obito as this guy who has like, oh, okay, so like he literally you know discarded his arm and he knew he was gonna do that and even still he went with it. Mm -hmm. So like, there's definitely something going on. Well, actually, that. now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure this is the first time we've seen Obito actually fight, it, it, or like as far as mm. as far as like not like in a flashback. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, because yeah, yeah, I guess like he blocked Sugetsu's sword when Sugetsu attacked Kisame yeah but that was the first time we saw like a fight from the masked man yeah a, a real fight yeah that is like I said not counting like the Minato flashback or whatever like, or the uh the Toby. I mean, the flashback was after that, even. Well, that's like, what I'm saying. So, like, so, like, even even discarding the the goofball Toby Persona fight with the the mm -hmm. Konoha Eight or whatever. Uh, you know, uh, th this was the first time we oh, actually yeah, seen yeah. Obito yeah. actually put in an effort in a in a fight. So this was actually pretty cool to see. I, I won't lie. On that alone, I think that was pretty cool. So that was your so number I four. I guess we agree with that one too. Yeah. What's your number four? Number four. I don't think this is underrated. I actually, now that I think about it, I think I just don't see a whole lot of people talk about it. But I, it's not that's another one from the tuning exams. I love the tuning exams. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, Shikamaru versus Tamari. Oh, okay. I guess that. This fight, out of all the fights we've mentioned here, is the most, like, quote-unquote famous one, but I, I see why you put it in here, because it's a very interesting fight, with a lot of strategy, like, Shikamaru's, like, how many layer strategy he did there was pretty cool to see, and it doesn't have, like, massive stakes, because, I mean, we know nobody's gonna die in that fight, so yeah. it's like a torment battle, and we're definitely waiting for, you know, bad things to happen in the attack, mm -hmm. but this is a good, like, distraction, I could say, and it builds up both Timari and Shikamaru as characters and their eventual relationship too it's really cool yeah I get, and i don't think it's underrated in the sense that people don't like it i think it just doesn't get talked about a lot because I if, I if i bring this up to anybody they're not gonna be like oh i hate that fight like i i don't think i've ever yeah. talked about it but i just don't see a lot of people like mention it as like one of their favorites and granted i don't think it's on my top 10 but i guarantee you if i were to like you know 
look look back on it, I definitely would say this fight's sitting up at least top twenty because of because of who it is in the context, especially in the context when you're watching it for the first time, you're not really expecting Shikamaru to put in a whole lot of effort. But not only does he do it, not only does he put in effort, he puts in effort in his own way, which is playing it strategically. Um, and I think in my mind, I think we're putting ourselves in the shoes of the of the crowd because we're all like not expect like other oh, crowd you know specifically aren't expecting much from shikamaru because they're all just waiting for sasuke to yeah. show up yeah and, and naruto had to push him into the yeah. arena <laughs> for him to fight like he didn't even want to go down there yeah so like we're all we're, like the whole crowd's expecting like this you know this no name you know genin to you know either throw in the towel or not put in much of a fight but then like even i think even izuma and kotetsu were like Bro, like everyone was throwing trash at him at the beginning of the, uh, the beginning of the fight. Now everyone's like all stunned because of how surprised they are. That's exactly how I was, bro. I was locked in on that fight because of all that was going on, bro. And then the 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 short expedition dump on Shikamaru's intellect from Asuma, bro. That had me thinking, like, who is this kid? This kid is should not be a Genin. He should be at least a tuning, uh, at, you know, at the very least, because how how high his IQ is. Yeah, that was the revelation of like, wow, Shikamaru is actually really intelligent because we saw glimpses of it here and there, but Shikamaru didn't care at all about anything before this fight. I guess you could say because sure he fought against Ken and he did beat her with strategy, but like it wasn't nearly as elaborate as what yeah. he did with Tamari because it didn't have to be. And then when he was in the Forest of Death, Ino was the leader of the team because Shikamaru. Just didn't bother with it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so like, bro, like and for every y'all listening, go back and watch that in the anime. Whenever like Ch Tamari herself is breaking down what happened to her, and she's like, bro, this slacker clown outsmarted me, and she was like, completely. <laughs> I'm telling you, I get chills about it just because like. It's Shikamaru, bro. Like, I, I could go on forever about it. But, yeah, no, I remember watching this. Like, even my brother, who wasn't even, like, a big anime fan, was actually locked into this fight. And the moment he had that, his he went his, like, a, a parachute out of his jacket. And my brother's like, bro, that was smart. He's like, I can't. He's like, I would have never thought of something like that. I'm like, yeah. I, that's what I'm saying. Like, this, yeah, there, there's fights. Really cool fight. There, there's, yeah. there's stuff to be said about, like, hand-to-hand, fast-paced action fights. But there's also something to be said about 3D chess, you know, fights like this. So, um. So yeah, that's definitely my number four. I don't think it's underrated yeah. in, in the in the in the terms of it's not liked at all. I just don't see enough people give it enough love. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool one. Yeah, I, I definitely see that. All right. So what's your number three? Uh, moving on to my number three is gonna be Anko versus Orochimaru. This is probably like wow. the only fight Anko has in the series. I mean, I guess she fought against Kabuto like way later in the war arc, but I don't think people realize this now because they usually watched or read this fight so long ago but Anko used to be like a pretty important character when she was introduced a lot of focus was given to her and when she goes to the forest of death after she realizes okay Orochimaru is behind this I mean he can kill people in there he can kill all those kids I have to do something about it because he was my teacher and she takes responsibility for herself that's a really nice moment and yeah the fight was kind of short and Orochimaru just kind of tricked her and used the substitution Jutsu, but Anka was willing to sacrifice herself and take Orochimaru with her. I just find that entire exchange very interesting and cool for the character. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about underrated fights. Anka was an underrated character, bro. I think she was definitely mis uh, misused. I mean, I get, I get it. There's like you know the, the important. A lot of characters. <laughs> yeah, I would say there's a lot of characters, specifically in this arc alone, really that that need to take more importance. But yeah, I I totally agree with you. I think Anko. Uh, I don't think she was a throwaway character, but she definitely could have been used a lot more uh at least up until yeah. uh, at least up until like you know if they had to discard her at a certain point l other than what they did i would have said like she could have been at least somewhat relevant up until maybe the tenchi bridge arc where they were specifically were going to go like look for rochimaru uh yeah, imagine how much more interesting it would have been if anka was the sensei for their team and not yamato yeah, the I, most boring character yeah in the exactly franchise. yeah anka's personality in general is just you know cool you know it's really yeah. chill but at the same time she knows when it's appropriate to get serious so yeah like you said this and this is like, like the case for it. she was all like you know all you know happy about the tuning exams force of death and, like pretty much trolling all the the Genny <laughs> up until she found out that Rochimar was like oh crap now I gotta go I gotta go take care of this and uh as for the fight itself I I do agree it's it's short I remember being a little bit disappointed Anko not being it because like now granted make sure you don't misunderstand me y'all that I was not expecting this Orochimaru guy as, as I when I first watched it to be this freaking powerful so I when I when I saw Anko going towards him you know 
to you know take care of him. I thought she was actually gonna be able to put up a you know a fight or whatever because this was just after Sasuke had just melted his face, and so I was like, oh, okay, mm-hmm. Anko's gonna take care of business, and then she doesn't. I was a little disappointed, but now obviously I know why because this guy is like a tier above uh, people like even Kakashi. So, uh, but no, I, I agree though. The fight is actually really good. Uh, it's really um, it's really cool to see you know her kind of use his own techniques against him. Um, you know, yeah, I, and with hindsight, Anko she knew she was going to her death yeah. in that situation. There was no like for her, she had already given up on her own life when she went there to fight Orochimaru. And it's just because Orochimaru likes to play with his victims that he left her live. And I mean, it's just a nice moment for the character, I would say. And that was probably her best moment in the entire series because after that, she kind of didn't get any more screen time at all. Yeah, and not to, you know, take the limelight away from Anko, but I do love, like like you just mentioned, he let her, like Orochimaru let her live, but it was like, he not only let her live, but he's like, yeah, bring a message to the Hokage. Don't cancel the tuning exams. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, this guy's literally just outing himself on purpose uh, because he he wants to, like, test himself. At least that's what it looked like to me. Like, he just did not care. Yeah, he wanted to have some fun, and he's like, yeah, if you cancel this, there are gonna be a lot of problems for you. Who better continue it? I mean, honestly, that and that put like it, that put the situation in a no-win like situation. Like honestly, I was like, bro, like then the, the, like it, there is no way out of this. Like one way or the other, something bad's gonna happen. Like he like Orochimaru already anticipated every you know yeah. you know predicament. So that's when they planted the seat. Okay, the tuning exams are not gonna end very well. Not how you're expecting. And until the invasion starts, you're anticipating that. You're nervous. Okay, when's Orochimaru going yeah. to attack or do something? Well, what's gonna happen? <laughs> Like, even though, like, even though, like, I know that we're getting off the topic here, but even though we're, like, shown, you know, scenes, uh, from the distance about, like, them getting ready for the attack, we still, like, are on edge about when it's gonna get, when it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So that, that's why I love about this certain product. But the uh, the fight, though, yeah, I, I, I can see why it's underrated to, uh, to other people, you know, to, it's not one of the fights I would think of, so that, I guess that is, you know, why it's on this, on this list. Um, mm-hmm. but no, it's really cool. I like Anko, I like Orochimaru, and their interaction was definitely an interesting one, uh, whenever I first watched it, for sure. Nice. All right. What's gonna be your number three? Okay, so number three, um, you know, it's funny, we talked about this, um, you know, not too long ago. Kakashi and Naruto versus Sasuke at the Five Kage Summit. Okay. Uh, I, I know most people wouldn't consider this an actual fight, but that's the point. I think that's that. I mean, they do fight. They do fight, so it is a fight. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know. It's just not like a... a- I guess you could say not a complete fight. A conventional don't go all fight. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because especially Naruto and Sasuke, they just clash Chidori and Rasengan once, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, and then Sasuke and Kakashi don't even fight for the span of like five minutes, if that. So it's like, yeah. Uh, I, I, but I appreciate this fight for what it is. I suppose, I guess, if that makes any sense. Like, I, I guess it's just really meant to show us how Team 7 really digests the fact that Sasuke is not the same person uh, that they knew. Um, you know, because, like, the, the last time that Naruto saw Sasuke, he was he was a rogue, but he wasn't evil. Like, he wasn't, you know, full of hate and whatnot. So, like, but now seeing him, like, this is, like, the first time he's ever seen Sasuke in this state before. So, it, it's very tough to like, digest, for him to digest that. And Kakashi, even more so, since he, he's never even seen Sasuke since he left the village. So, um, the interaction, I think, is more important to me than the actual fight mm-hmm. itself but i won't take away from like kakashi being able to kamui the 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 susano era point blank i thought that was always crazy especially when you like you watch the fan animation and like see it from a different perspective on how fast that thing was um and if you all if you all haven't watched the fan and me and daigo were just talking about this like a few days ago like go and watch that fan animation it is solid like, yeah it's a really good one about how kakashi the best naruto fan animation there is yeah about how kakashi but, and sasuke should have fought but I, yeah i'm going off the rails yeah. what, do you, what do you think like i like the interaction especially when sasuke starts to laugh because kakashi and sakura are like come back sasuke you have to be a good guy again yeah. and then sasuke's just like yeah sure just bring my clan back make them alive again and i'll gladly return but you and your village you've taken everything away from me and then he starts to laugh and say you do you can't beat me kakashi yeah i 
I wish the fight had been a little more climactic between Sasuke and Kakashi. I think that's a lot of waste potential. Um, because in the series, the fight's like, what, five pages long? Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. I think the reunion fight between Kakashi and Sasuke should have been something kind of like what Orochimaru versus Hiruzen was, because it was pretty much the same situation. Kakashi even mentions it in his inner thoughts. Oh, so this is what the third Hokage was feeling when Orochimaru was fighting against Orochimaru. Yeah. Even though he's done all those bad things, you still, you know, care about your pupil, and it's very difficult to go through with it because Kakashi actually wanted to kill Sasuke there. Yeah. He made a decision. Yeah. Um, but the fight, the fight itself is not very good, but the interactions are. So, I will say, yeah, like, I, guess. I will say, like, Sasuke giving Kakashi some clout when he's like, you know, for a bar of shotgun, gun, you really are pretty good at its use. And then, I <laughs> then, then, yeah. And then, like, when, like, even later on, he's like, he's like, bro, he's like, I didn't, I couldn't even fathom that someone who's not new Chia could awaken the manga queue. And I was like, okay, he's like, he's giving my boy some props a little bit. Um, and then I will say, like, the later on, the, the clash with Naruto and Sasuke is very, you know, it's heavy. You know, it's only one clash, but, you know, for, yeah. for what it is, it's it's very... Because it does set up their their eventual showdown at the end of the series. Yeah. So, um, for what... I don't mind that being short. That makes sense for it being short. My, my gripe with this fight is Kakashi versus Sasuke being so short. Definitely. So, like, I know people may not... Get, you know, I think that's it does belong on this list because I think it's underrated. Maybe it's an underrated scene rather than a fight, I suppose, but I still consider mm -hmm. it a fight, like you said earlier. Yeah, no, yeah. All right. So let's move on to my number two, which is going to be Shino versus Conqueror. Oh, you know the what? The other Shino fight. He would. He would. Uh, you know, no, I'm just kidding. No, I, I, this one, yeah, this one doesn't get enough love. I will say that. I guess it makes sense because there's so many things happening in the Chunyi Exams invasion there with Orochimaru versus Hiruzen, Sasuke versus versus Gaara, and then Gaara versus Naruto sandwiched in between the Shino fight, that you're just not paying that much attention to it. Yeah, but, but I like the great. way, that, I like, at least in the anime, I do like how it's, like, transitioned into those fights, though. I don't, like, I think it actually yeah, yeah. works pretty well. No, it definitely does. It's just that that fight's not as long as those. Yeah. And, I mean, Shino and Conqueror's not as popular as all the other characters. But the fight itself, like, it's pretty damn amazing. The strategies Shino is pulling to try and beat Conqueror who's set up to be a pretty powerful threat mm -hmm. with a poison in his puppets. Like, Shino is using his bugs with, you know, a lot of IQ there. Yeah. He's stucking them into the puppets so that, that they can't move their joints. And then he's using them to eat the chakra threads so that Conqueror has to cut them and he's not able to control the puppets very well. And then the strategy he uses, putting the female bug on Conqueror's head and pretending he missed a punch so that uh, he can attract the bugs from the other side to just absolutely swarm Conqueror yeah. and win the fight. That's really cool. Yeah, I think that, like, it's one of those things where this fight, it, it, it is in the shadow of other fights. Um, uh, that are happening around it but in spite of that yeah because these are and i think it, i think this fight actually has a decent build up too i mean it's obviously not as extensive yeah. as like gara or like you know naruto and gara or whatever but i mean it was built up because that conqueror forfeited so like you know i'm pretty sure i mean i know i was disappointed because at the time i was like i was you know on my boy shino i was wanting to see more of him and i was like conqueror just forfeit i'm like brother like what did you why why did you just forfeit i wanted to see shino fight and so like that yeah fight and i will say this doesn't have anything really to do with the fight per se but in the beginning i really like i enjoy sasuke's interaction with shino i think it's mm -hmm. actually pretty cool because you don't really see sasuke interacting with a lot of the other konoha 12 so it's like seeing that like it's actually pretty cool like especially since they're, they're both like the cool stoic kind of characters so it, yeah and they kind of acknowledge each other as a oh okay you're a pretty good ally in this situation so i'm gonna trust you even though they probably never talked to each other ever before that. yeah I, know, I remember watching the, in the english dub whenever like uh sasuke was like he's getting ready to go he's like all right man if you're sure you're all right and she was like don't worry give me 10 minutes i'm gonna uh, go chase after you to make sure you're okay and he's like don't worry and then yeah he's like don't worry <laughs> when she yeah go ahead oh yeah yeah so, and then Sasuke says, oh, no worry, I'm going to finish the fight before yeah. you get there, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's funny because when Shino wins the fight, but he got poisoned in the process, he's like, I'm sorry, Sasuke, I'm not going to be able to catch up with you and then help you out. And then Sasuke then said the same thing. They cut away to Sasuke, and, and Sasuke is struggling a lot yeah. against Gara. You're like, yeah, it would have been pretty good if Shino could show up and help Sasuke out because Sasuke's getting kicked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I just enjoy like interactions like that. So it didn't have anything to do with the fight, but as the for the fight itself, um, I think Conqueror. I won't take away from Conqueror either. I think the Conqueror kind of kept us on our toes too, because I mean that last like little minute or two of the fight where he 
had Crow's head like going towards mm-hmm. Shino. Uh, and I was and, like, just. I don't know. At the time, Conqueror was like one of the guys. You know, it's like uh, you could really get bigger than the Sand siblings, so you knew like they were tough, even though they weren't Gara tough. Like Tabari and Conqueror, they were they were lethal enough on their own. Um, and obviously, you know, for the most of us, we were rooting for Shino. So like, I, I think Conqueror was keeping us on our toes. But I do like the way the fight ended though, with Shino kind of like you know cleverly one upping uh, Conqueror. And then he's like, Shino's like, I hate having to explain the same thing twice. And then he just, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I love Shino. He's he's just so cool no. Dude, Shido is so cool in part one it's such a shame what happened to him in Shippuden yeah kind of became a joke character no, I, I totally agree with you I think that fight is definitely underrated I think um I I mean on that fight alone I think it you could really put him in the same ballpark of IQ as Sasuke and Shikamaru personally yeah it wouldn't be a you know outrageous to say that yeah all right so it's gonna be your number two. Uh, you know what? I think this might actually be someone relative to your number two because it's uh, between two characters that are. Uh, well, okay. Conqueror is not that loved, but in part one he was. But in this one, it's between two characters that are pretty popular or at least you know loved. Uh, Obito versus Conan. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't think again this might be the same thing with Shikamaru and Tamari. I don't think people like don't like this fight. I just don't see a lot of people talking about it. Um. I guess people only talk about it when they're talking about Conan and Scaly. Exactly. And maybe Obito sometimes. Exactly. But when it comes to the storytelling aspect of it, I guess people really don't talk about it enough. So you're definitely right. And, and I've been guilty of that too. Like I'm also like a, a, a Scaler, you know, sometimes. So like I, I definitely talk about Ob- uh, Conan and Scaling. But I also think that like she could have prematurely avoided the whole Four Shinobi World War. Had, had it not been for Izanagi, there, I mean, she would have s- I mean, yeah. saved the world, pretty much. If Obito didn't have Izanagi there, he would have lost the fight. Yeah. Um, that paper ocean, when it opens up, you're like, oh, okay, <laughs> I wasn't expecting I'm that like, at did all. She like, just, <laughs> like, did she just part the Red Sea, bro? Like, what the heck is going <laughs> on here? Yeah, I, I, that blew my mind. I actually thought, like, how in the world is he going to get out of this? There, like, even th- Again, this is before we're even introduced well okay we were introduced to the izanagi but like we were introduced we weren't introduced to the fact that obito has izanagi so we were like how he's done for like there's no way he's getting out of that and then he does but even like before then though like i think conan was actually doing pretty decent for who she was fighting yeah she tagged obito and people say obito and the rest of it her but even still that's pretty impressive and she was also willing to sacrifice herself and explode everything Mm -hmm. with her and yep. Obito to get the win there. And I just like what happens before this fight too, because Obito shows up there and Conan says, yeah, I was expecting you. And then they move to somewhere else where Conan laid their trap, you know, the paper ocean. And then Obito starts to kind of diss Nagato, the Akatsuki and the Rain Village. He says, I am the actual leader and I mean, why are you still wearing those robes if you're not in the Akatsuki anymore, if you betray me? And then Conan's like, we created the Akatsuki. Yeah. <laughs> the red clouds are supposed to be the suffering of our village. <laughs> and the Renegon was awakened in our village. And Obito's like, you think that? Like, because uh, I gave Nagato the Renegon. I was like, what? That's great. Yeah. That, that was a really cool like introduction to the fight, I would say. Obito's like, sit down. Let me teach you. Let me give you a lesson real quick. And yeah, yeah, that, that was definitely a, a, a huge revelation, bro. I wasn't. I, I wasn't expect. I, I honestly, it's funny enough. I actually got that uh, the revelation through the Storm Three game because there was a t- there was a moment where I wasn't able to oh, watch okay. the, the 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 show on the anime yet because I you know. That was back whenever you had to like look up on crunch like you know certain websites where you can only watch like you know certain episodes online you know for for, mm-hmm. for free certain uh, websites yeah uh, so like those pirated websites so like you had to like you know and for a lot of people like the way they did digested the uh, Naruto was through the Storm games and I remember mm-hmm. watching that I was like bro what and then I had to play as you know Conan fighting uh, Obito uh, but no like that that whole fight dude uh yeah I think it's really slept on um. Especially when you consider that Conan, you know, when you when you look at Conan, uh, you know, objectively, I think from a standpoint, you don't really consider her S class, but you know, all of the members of like the Akatsuki are considered S class, and like I think here, yeah. she definitely proves it. You know, I think she's definitely something that you don't want to go toe to toe with, especially if you if she has prep time. But even if she does, I mean, I would say even without the ocean, she's S class already. Yeah. Here. So like, I I think this was a really warm welcome. Personally, to me, I would have loved if she got brought back and as a reanimation, just 
so she can get more mm-hmm. screen time, really. But I think the way she went out, I don't know. It's like it's not heroic. It is heroic, but it's not in the sense of like she sacrificed herself for like yeah. you know because it, it didn't really amount to much. But the way she did try, but it, it's kind of tragic because it didn't work. Yeah, and Obito still got what he wanted. But the way her death happened, yeah, with the bloody paper flying to that shack that she used to hide mm-hmm. with her team and Jiraiya back then, and then her paper completes their like little plaques that they used to signify like oh we're out or we're in, and she was the only one who didn't turn it over. Yeah, and then when she dies the paper finally lands on it that's a really nice scene and the two page spread of that scene is one of the best ones in the entire yeah film. i in agree in our manga it's amazing yeah so i think if she got brought back it would have left a, a bad taste in my mouth i, I don't know why I, I as much as i would love to see her still because we didn't get to see much of her it's just one of those things where i don't know i, I think i think conan's character in general just got overshadowed by nagato which i understand but you know i just i it, it, to me it just feels like every other member of the akatsuki get more screen time than Conan. Yeah. So you wouldn't want to see her in the war because of that? I did. I I would, but I think it might have been the same. It might have been the same case like Jiraiya getting brought back because I don't know. I think that would have let I wouldn't mind that actually. I think you could have brought them both back and that they could interact as Edo's and like Conan could say, okay, Naruto, he changed Nagato and me and then Jiraiya could be proud and stuff. I think it would be interesting to see that. I I get it. Uh, I just want to say it's like, I think think Jiraiya's death fit so well it's really hard so you don't want to kind of yeah you know, take away from it reviving yeah so i understand that yeah but like people like she's sweet i guess you can kind of say the same thing about pretty much any character that's revived with it true <laughs> well like people like zabuza it's like one of those things where like it it, it didn't just recently happen so it's like uh, i don't know mm-hmm. i think zabuza like, yeah. like I, I know we're getting off the beaten path but it's like Kona, if conan did come back i would i wouldn't have hated it like at all but I was been like, bro, like she just recently died. Like it kind of would have been like. It- but it would make sense in universe because Obito definitely tagged her several times with his rods there and draw a lot of blood from Conan, and he would have Conan's corpse. So yeah. It wouldn't be difficult at all for him to bring Conan's corpse to Kabuto and say, "Revive her. Let's use her for the war because she's an Akatsuki and she's powerful." Yeah, I guess I guess um, on a meta level, it probably would like it just be like because it'd be like bringing Kisame back when he just got he was just killed like pre war arc you know mm-hmm. um even though you can argue kisame was killed far away from them and they didn't get kisame's body yeah but conan was right there yeah <laughs> so like oh one of the scenes i really like in this fight is when conan's like really tired he, she kind of falls over because she has no chakra anymore but she's then saying oh i spent everything with the 600 billion paper bombs but at least madara is and then and then bam, she disappears. bro that dead sh- chills i'm telling and, you yeah Ugh. he appears behind her and you're like how the hell is he alive yeah uh <laughs> and, admittedly bro like i will say i up and until a certain point, I was still convinced that this was Madara, not actually mm-hmm. Obito. Uh, now, when I say that, I obviously you know don't mean that because I I know this is again beaten path. But uh, whenever I saw that, I was like, okay, now I'm kind of convinced that this is still Madara, but he was using Obito's body similar to how Orochimaru was trying to use. Uh, so I was planning to sauce. Yeah, yeah, like I thought that was kind of like the same case. So I was really I was under the impression this was still Madara. So the fact that like that. Sh- Sharding gun like was you know beaming out of the out of his mask. I was like, oh my god, like this is not Obito, is it? No, oh yeah. So, um, mm-hmm. so yeah, <laughs> I, I, that's, a, that's such a chill moment to me. Honestly, I, I won't lie. That that whole fight just yeah. And then he just kind of explains everything because he says, yeah, you're gonna die, so I might as well explain. Freaking it Obito was a freaking demon in that fight. He just did not care, bro. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, yeah. yeah, yeah. Obito was a menace, bro. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, I, so... yeah, number two for me. That's a pretty good pick, I would say. So let's move on to my number one, and this may be a... You know, I think this is a very overlooked fight. So that's why I put it in here, and a fight that I really enjoy, which is Onoki and Gara versus Rasa, Gara's dad, and the fourth oh. Kazukagi, and Mu, Onoki's teacher, and second Tsuchikage. Number one, huh? Okay. You know what? That might be like a... That, that's a fight that's overshadowed, for sure. Uh, yeah, because it happens in that moment in the war where several things are happening at the same time, and it comes right right before Madara shows up, so... I was gonna say... A big shadow that's like <laughs> Well, that that one's like the same case with the Shino and Konkuro one, where it's like kind of sandwiched in between Sage yeah. Naruto versus the third Raikage, which is definitely a good fight, and then, like you said, Madara showing up. Um, 
Also, Itachi and Nagato yeah, versus Naruto. Yeah, that is and true. Gigi. Yeah, so like, yeah, it it, it it that is literally the Shino and Kakura fight, like legit. <laughs> <laughs> no, and everything about this fight, I find just epic in the proportions of it, in the jutsus they use, because it's Gara fighting his dad and Anoki fighting his teacher. So there's a big connection there, and the way the fight just is anticipated by the characters, because there's an entire army, the fourth battalion's there waiting for the Kage to arrive, and Gara and Anoki go in front because, okay, we're going to engage them first because we're obviously stronger than the rest here. And the way the fight starts is this epic explosion of things because Gara clashes his sand against his dad's sand. And this, like the contrast between Gara's actual sand and the golden sand, it's really cool to see. And then Onoki clashes his particle style against Moose and then they explode and they make this hole in the sand. It's just a really cool opening scene for the fight itself. Yeah, and even more so since I'm pretty sure this is like the first time we've seen Onoki actually in a fight. Um, I know the Sasuke. Yeah, I guess he fought against Sasuke, but it was like you know, two seconds. I was like literally two, <laughs> two seconds. So yeah, this is actually the first time we're getting to see Onoki fight for the first time, and the fact that he's fighting. No, I guess he fought against Dater and Kabuto. Oh, before. true. Nope. Yeah, that is right. That is right. But this is the first time we were actually seeing Onoki. Okay, he's throwing hands for real because he was kind of holding back. He didn't want to kill the turtle yeah. in the fight against Kabuto. But everybody was hyping up, especially Mu, saying, okay, this guy has a KK Tota, just like Onoki. So Onoki is literally the only person that can deal with him. And then there's Raza, and he has to fight against his son. Obviously, Gara has to fight against his dad, who tried to kill him several times. Yeah, like, we're, ar we're already so going into this fight with a bad taste in our mouths about Gara's yeah. dad. <laughs> so uh, we're obviously going to be rooting for them, like, right off the bat. Um, and it's interesting because when Gara first uses his attack, before they even see Gara and Anoki, Raza sees it and he says, Oh, okay, this is Shukaku's sand ability, and he counters it with his gold sand, which was like a hard counter for it. And then Gara shows up and Raza's like, Wait, what? Shukaku's not here, it's Gara. And then he realizes, Okay, so Gara's doing this, this is yeah. crazy. Uh, and then Gara says, I am no longer a Jinchuriki, even, so you don't know anything now, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will say, like, I, I love the the whole like exposition dump on Gar's past, like what really happened. Um, and it's just like I, it's not, it's not one of the things I was expecting, you know, especially since it was like one of the you know, I want that's like the earlier fights, I guess, of the war arc. I was just like at the time, I was like, I don't know, yeah, I, it's I, a little uh, bloat, no, I boring, no, I wouldn't say it's boring, it's bloated with a lot of like exposition yeah. dumping, uh, but I love it to the fact to the point because it, it is Gara, you know, we love, I love Gara. You know, uh, and Gara, that's the reason why I put this fight here. It's uh, the resolution to Gara's character arc when you find out what actually happened that Gara wasn't cursed. It's not Shukaku that was protecting him all this time, it was actually his mother's spirit. Mm -hmm. And then Gara can actually be fulfilled, and his dad is kind of redeemed in this fight, too. Because you you see the, the perspective of Raza, he was trying to protect the village from Gara, who was going crazy yeah. and killing people. Sure, he may have prompted a bit of that because he wasn't a good dad, but he was also trying to protect the village in a way. And when he sent Yashimaru, his, you know, Gara's uncle there, his mother's brother, he told Yashimaru, okay, attack Gara. If Gara doesn't do anything, if he's able to control himself, we're gonna start treating him better. If he doesn't do that, we're gonna have to kill him. And unfortunately for Gara, he just lashes out and kills Yashimaru, not even trying to, which yeah. is very tragic. Yeah, uh, especially if you. If if you go and like rewatch the fight uh, between Naruto and Gara and like first learn, you know, uh, or not first learn, obviously, but if you like again, you see the the same scenes that you see in that fight, and then you go back to this fight, bro, it, it'll hit you harder than you than you realize. I mean, honest to God. So, uh, yeah, on that alone, I could definitely see like because again, Gara is just, is one of my favorite characters by far, and just getting that resolution in the fight, it's definitely cool, and it it, it gives Gara that like that you know what do you call it? No, that that spark in him, you know, that uh, that pick me yeah. up and to you know to start taking on his dad. He's like, okay, now I gotta prove that I'm strong enough to, to go forward with this, and then what better way to do it by beating his old man? So, um, and, and yeah, this is like the conclusion to Gara's character arc in the series. I mean, if Gara died after this fight, he would have been a completed character in terms of his arc. So it's a really good fight just because of that, because several characters that were really nice characters didn't have a conclusion for their arcs in the work. Like, for example, Rock Lee. Yep. They didn't do Jack in the work. Yeah. I will say that... <laughs> At least Gara got something. Yeah, I, was, I, 
will say this is one of the more... Uh, I, I think it says something, too, that this is one of the more interesting fights in the beginning section of the war arc anyway. So, because, mm -hmm. you know, you and I have talked about this before, where the beginning section was not all that great when it comes to fights. Uh, but this one definitely stood out, you know, uh, for sure. at least to me. I could definitely see, like, how, again, like we said, it, it's overshadowed by three other separate fights going on at the same time. But uh, I definitely do think it deserves, you know, all the love that, uh, that it should be getting. Yeah, and then there's also Onoki and Mu clashing at the same time, and sure, the way this battle, this fight is resolved isn't as interesting as the way Gara resolves the fight with his dad, because Naruto shows up, and then they seal just half of Mu, and then Mu can come back and revive Madara with his Edo summoning, mm -hmm. but still... It's very interesting the way Onoki clashes against his old teacher because he's like, yeah, this is going to be very problematic because he's very strong. And if Naruto didn't show up there to help and use his planetary Rasengan, there's a good chance they wouldn't be able to. Yeah, sure. Like I said, like, I think Onoki just seeing Onoki, you know, actually in a fight for the first time really was uh, on that alone. It's definitely one of the because, again, he's hyped up to be this old man who's lived for I don't know how long now, like almost 80 plus <laughs> years. So he's got something packing, you know, so. Uh, it was really cool to see that for sure, and like, what better way to do it than fighting his uh, his predecessor? So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely an underrated fight for sure. I could definitely see why you have it at number one. Yeah. All right. So, what's gonna be your number one? I can already see people in the comments for this one being a little bit, you know, uh, predictable. But I don't think it's actually because of the characters that are in it. But I think it's actually for me, it's all about the fight, that the choreography. But it's Kakashi and Obito versus the Stone Ninja. No, oh, in the flashback. Yeah, bro. This fight was. Oh, solid. I will not. I don't see anybody really talking about it, but it's very short. That's like I get it. But if we're talking about just the, the choreography itself, it's pretty fun. It's almost like Fu and Torne versus Obito. Like it, it, it's. It seems like it's a way. But obviously, this has most more relevance to the story because the characters are much more important, and the moment they're going through is much more important. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely see why this is so much higher up than what I put Winter Rune there. Well, when I say that, I mean like it seems like a wear of its own runtime. Like, it's not supposed to be long. It's supposed to be, like, them, like, showing that they have actual good teamwork, you know? It it honestly... Yeah, for the first time. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, <laughs> it honestly takes you back. And it's very, to me, it's re very reminiscent of Naruto and Sasuke's first strategy teamwork against Zabuza. And it, like, because they, mm. they have parallels, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and even the even the stone ninja that, that they were fighting, he's like, y'all, you know, y'all make a pretty good team. I ain't gonna lie to you. And so, um, so yeah, I thought it was cool. I thought it was a, it was a really good fight. It's very short. I know, but uh, I don't know. Something about the choreography uh, between Kakashi and Obito is, is really cool. Um, when Obito uses his legs to open the Stone Ninja's guard so that Kakashi can yes. slash him, I think that's the coolest Honestly, part that's of like that the, fight in terms the, of the choreography. Honestly, that's like the highlight of the fight for me, as far as the choreography, yes, for, like, for sure. Because again, mm -hmm. that's like the solid teamwork, you know? Um, I, it's really cool. I, I know like this fight, honestly, I think as far as the fights I've picked, this might be the shortest one, maybe with the exception of Shino and Zaku, but yeah, this one... I don't know. I just I think I like it so much in despite or in spite of the fact that it's so short. I think, um, but I won't lie to you. The fact that it's Kakashi and Obito, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna you know front and be like I don't <laughs> I, I'm not gonna pick it because of that. Uh, definitely has something to do with the characters, but yeah, I think it's uh, not just because of that. <laughs> no, I I think I don't think I honestly don't think I even like really realized the the parallels that it drew to Naruto and Sasuke until way later after the fight was done. Mm -hmm. And I was going back and watching and like, bro, that actually reminds me of their first like fight with Zabuza, like how good their teamwork was especially for the first time because when they when naruto and sasuke fought zabuza that was the first time they actually worked together and it that that was a, a that was a move that tricked an elite joni so yeah uh so yeah i think it's very reminiscent of that fight it's a really good one alan it's nice to see the two characters coming together and that fight is extremely important for kakashi and obito's backstory and it comes back in the war as well when obito gets talk no jutsu and kakashi and obito are going to fight together again after all those years against Jutsu be Dara, so it comes back too with those parallels. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. So I definitely see why you put it in, in first place. And also, we you know you, you like Kakashi. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm not gonna front about it, but for sure, like I, I can already see people in the comments like, "Oh, it would be Kakashi is a, a fight Kakashi that you know that he takes part in." But whatever. It, it's just, it's like the shortest fight on this list. I'm pretty sure. Maybe aside from Shino and Zaku, and maybe uh, I guess 
the Ambu and the, versus the animal path is probably shorter. I don't know. It's I, it doesn't really make a difference if the fights are short or not. What matters is like how underrated they are. Yeah, I would say it's still a fight one way or the other. It you know they they swapped hands. We consider a fight whatever. So yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's my number one. So thanks for coming to the channel again, Lightning Snow. Definitely go subscribe to him. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below and watch this other video right here if you want to see me and Lightning Snow ranking every single arc in the Naruto series. That's over in his channel, so definitely go watch that. Do uh, you have anything to say in the end? No, I think this was really fun, bro. I, I, I haven't done a, you know, a video like this before, so this was very fun and funny to talk about. It's nice to see. Uh, we agree on a lot of the, because like these are really underrated fights, y'all. If y'all don't believe us, just go back and reread them or rewatch them, and I, we, we promise you these are really solid fights. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys. See you next one.